Hi. Uh, <laughs> I, I always wanted to, to see if there's somebody in the second room. So, so yeah, there, there are some people yeah. there. Okay, so hi, nice to meet you. I'm Marcin Piotrowski from Play, and uh, I will have a presentation with Aga, uh, which is, who is, according to the presentation, uh, who is representing UX Plus, but in fact it's not true. Uh, she's representing Play also, because we are working together on the project. Uh, so, you'd like to give us some presentation about what? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, about, about little things that matter, about cultural probing. So, this will not be a typical presentation. It won't be a typical speech talk because I have to leave because I have a meeting at my company. So, excuse me, I do apologize that I will leave you within, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes maybe, but then Aga will present the rest. I mean, the, the most interesting part of the, of the presentation. Uh, so, whoops. So, this is a pilot. So, so let, let's start. Okay, a better word comes with a price. So, this was in fact the clue of our presentation, but why we're here? We are here because we in fact are doing a lot of research, and I know that two approach, one is, if we're talking about design, so one is design approach, and the other is option is research approach, and we deeply believe in, in research approach, in designing things. And in one of the projects, we are, which is in fact done right now. So we are we are trying to uh, uh, redesign our invoices. But first, how to find information? What is good or what is not good in invoices? Because you know invoices are don't be don't be straight. They are they are boring thing. Come yeah. on. But the thing is that they are they are boring, but uh, they are a thing that touches the users, the clients of Play, every single month. So this is something that comes back to them over and over and over again. Uh, so sometimes we, wh when we design thi things, we think of those you know, spectacular moments when the client gets a buy-in or, or you know, kind of interacts with the product, and we keep on forgetting that uh, these are not really the things that come to the client, to the customer, to the user uh, month after month all the time and cause all the troubles that it can cause. Thank you. And so in fact we decided to, to study, to, to start with the research, yeah, surprise. And <laughs> so when we, when we uh, were thinking about what type of research we, we should do, so we decided to, to try uh, cultural probes. And why? And why? Because we've never did it before. <laughs> and so this was, this was uh, there's a good situation to start. So but actually, there was another reason for that. Yeah, really? Yeah, uh, well, you don't remember anymore. I don't remember. Maybe uh, more, more, probably more theoretical. And no, uh, actually, when we were thinking uh, about, uh, about this whole project, I was at the time teaching at uh, Academy of Fine Arts, and we started thinking that we think of design as something that comes at the end, that this is like you know, the final result that we bring, and then, you know, hey, there is the product or there is the solution, and you use it. And then we thought, okay, how about bringing the design at the very beginning of the process? So to design something for the users, so they can enjoy giving the information from them to us. So you know, that usually we don't really think about it, and that was the idea there. Oh, maybe. <laughs> uh, so in fact, so in fact, we made a group recruitment. Uh, we we uh, we designed. In fact, not we, but uh, but our students from Academy of Fine Arts. Shamek, are we present here? No. No, Przemek is not here, but we will, we will present them later. Yeah, maybe the, later. The, the, the but, but so, so imagine that this is the first meeting. This is the first meeting of our research project, and we are just uh, average customers who are recruited to, 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 to participate in it. So we are sitting in the room. There are 10 of us, imagine, uh, 10 of you. Give me the remote control. <laughs> so here you are. Thank you. And uh, so, so uh, I'm the speaker and I'm saying hello, I'm from Play, you know, I'm from marketing department where we are trying to make your be life better and so on and they think, come on, what kind of bullshit this guy is saying. But uh, at the end, so, so th they know that it will be a research and they know that it will be probably boring thing because, you know, research is, is not a fun. So I told them, come on, we want you to share with us your thoughts about invoices. And, and and there's okay, of course wait, wait, wait. of course of course they were sad <laughs> and, and annoyed. But when I presented put this on the table, so they started 
to, to, to green. They look like a kids. If you, if you have kids, some of us may be. So you know the type of face they have when they try to smile. They want to smile, but they don't want to really show you. They don't want to, 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 to show you that it's funny. So they try to be, you know, a reliable adult man. So, you know, this was interesting. So I told them that, come on, this is, you know, this is a cultural probe. Every one of you will be given one, one pack of them. Inside, you've got, you've got things which are designed for you, because you, we are expecting you to make something for us. But this is maybe not fun, but we tried to, do the, to, to design this thing in a way that would make the design process, the research process, a bit better. And this is a manual for you. And I opened it. So, OK, so this is a manual for you. So the, pr the process will take six days from today. And we will meet on the seventh day as a, on, on a workshop which will summarize the, your findings. So in this booklet, you will find descriptions for every single day. And every day, is, but there's information what to do, how to do. And it's those packages. You've got all, all what you need to do those research. So there's so there, are, there are a lot of stuff inside. And I tried to get to the next step and go through every single day to explain them what we're expecting them to do, what's inside, how to use them. And suddenly, something different and totally unexpected happened. Because they told me, uh, come on, stop, stop. Please don't show us. I said, why? Come on, we are paying you money, and I'm here from Warsaw to in Wood just to explain you how to use that. And they told me, uh, you know, but in fact, we don't want, uh, we don't want you to, to explain us. Is the everyday designed the same way? I mean, is the whole experience designed? I mean, yeah, in fact, you've got everything is prepared that way. So every single day you've got, you've got tools in the, in the paper box. So, so yeah, it, it is. So they told me, come on, we don't want you to spoil that. We don't want you to spoil that experience. We want to do that alone with the home. So okay, so so the uh, so the meeting was supposed to, to to last for an hour. It ended after 15 minutes. Okay, so then then came the next group, and it was the same story. The same sort. Ten different people told me that they don't want to hear the detailed explanation. What we are, what are the the tools for? How to use them? Because they wanted to discover it by themselves and to play with that uh, with, with those. It, the, the, uh, the same situation happened third time. So all 30 participants, uh, in fact, uh, were not interested in explaining them uh, how, to, how to use that. And in fact, they were, I don't know, taking some kind of risk that they will not uh, do what we expect them to do because they will not be, I don't know, they not, not have enough information how to use that. So finally, eventually the day they went with the, with the packages, and we've met a week ago. And uh, so the rest will be told by Aga, but there was one important information that uh, one of my colleagues, who is um, deeply involved in the project, I think he's the project leader from the business, business side, uh, he has a wife, and he asked me, come on, you know, my wife is in fact, is totally not involved in our invoicing process. Uh, but she is very deeply involved in managing home uh, finances and so on. So that's that she who pays bills and so on. And if well, when I did it, so so they turn off uh, they, they turn off my lights. So so could she participate in it? That, uh, I said, come on, why not? Uh, in fact, it's he's my internal customer, internal client. So why not to give him a copy of this? So so I did, and. Uh, and he gave it to, to her wife. And uh, after that, I thought it was over because we had a lot of data from our, from our research. But her wife, it, it happened that her wife created, uh, something happened completely different in his home. 
And uh, I realized that when he came to me and asked, could I have a look what's inside the box? I said, and I said, come on, man, you've got one in your house. Why, why are you asking me to, to show you what's inside? Ask your wife. No, I can't. No, I can't, because what, what she did, she created some kind of fucking ritual. And in fact, every day, with 7.30 p.m., she's closing the door to her room, makes a brews a coffee, and doing, I don't know what, but she, she, she don't want to show me what's inside. She told me that this is a great story and this is, uh, this is something brilliant, but I don't know what's inside the box. And uh, when I finally decided to, to make an interview uh, with her wife, and the interview, I thought it will take us 30 minutes. In fact, it lasted two hours. He gave us a lot, a lot of insights. But uh, what's the story about this is that the, the way we asked question uh, created some kind of very deep engagement from customers. This, this was something totally unexpected. We, we, we do a lot of research. We, the, we do a lot of uh, participa participation methods. Uh, and uh, I thought that I know using some kind of diaries is a good thing. Uh, and it is. In fact, it is. But when I, uh, when I compare the results and the level of engagement from, from uh, diaries to this one, this is unbelievable. And the last story, and then I have to, I think, leave, is that uh, what, happened, what happened next? So after the workshop, I had uh, uh, workshop, workshops were organized in Łódź, which is a great city for organizing I know every, every research because I know there's something different in mindset of people from Łódź and they participate in, in great way. So if you have a chance to do a research in Łódź, so, so this is my rec I strongly recommend you. But I had a brain dump in my company the, the next day and a lot of people from, who were participants of the project, I mean business owners and I know guys from agency, design agency who supports us in, that, in their project. So there are a lot of participants. And we're discussing something. And the, the next day, uh, my colleague from the other department, who saw us working, came to my desk and asked me, uh, wow, what great workshop you have organized yesterday. Why did you, didn't you invite me? And I told her, come on, no, I didn't invite you because it wasn't a workshop. It was part of our research project, and it was you're not participating in that project, but it was uh, what, was, uh, what it was about. It was about invoices. Come on, invoicing. You are putting my leg. Come on, it, it cannot be true. Invoicing are boring. There's nothing interesting in invoices, and those people were deeply involved. They were participating. They were, they were, they were interested in what we are saying. And uh, come on, yeah, because it is interesting. It, in fact, it is interesting. And what's important for me, from when I look at the from, from from time, is that being part of the project also is also creates some kind of, of much deeper engagement. At the end, uh, when we started the project, we had a lot of lot of ideas, very rough ideas how to change our invoices, how to change how to change way we think about them. And what happens at the end is that. Though, uh, at what happened at the beginning, those ideas, we, we, shared, uh, we, we shared those ideas with our friends in the business department, and they were totally, uh, I would say, uh, denied, refused. And now, after the project, when, when they saw customers interacting and, and giving us stories about those invoices, so it happened that uh, those ideas we presented them were, became their ideas. And now they are very strong advocates of those of great shift, which will I think soon will will come in my company. If you are thinking about invoices, because I think we're now my company thinks about invoicing and invoices as a as a document, as a as a thing, and in fact it's a early kind of process. So I think that's all what I'd like to say. So uh, and the rest of that will be told by Aga. So it will be all theory and uh, I, I know everything. What, and this is how passion makes a mess out of a presentation. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> this is the most interesting part. It just starts. So okay. So what time is it? Yeah, I'm just thinking. What am I, where am I supposed to start? Because there was a whole story on how the process happened, oh, and yeah, Martin yeah, told you okay, the beginning yeah. and the end already. 
I'll try to get in and try so, to tell so you more thank about Thank you. Have a great time with Aga. <laughs> ah, Aga will, uh, will answer all your questions. <laughs> Oh my God, it's good that I took a, p a part in this process because otherwise I would be completely confused. Uh, so actually, uh, I'll go back to the, uh, a few slides. So these are the students who, uh, who made the, the probes. Actually, it must have been a really tough time on them. They only had a week to create 30 boxes uh, to get them all packed up, uh, like Martin showed you. And every single thing was hand-wrapped by them uh, and prepared as a, uh, a sort of a personal gift for, uh, for the participants who could actually experience what sort of elements could be presented. The beautiful thing was th that, that, came to their, uh, uh, to ca that came to them uh, was that for every single box, for every single uh, task, uh, they created a gift. It would be a chocolate, it would be a pin, it would be a, a wonder bomb, you know, that the thing that you hang into into your car. But that was something that was like a cherry on the on the top of the cake that made people feel that they were really thought about, that they were not subjects of the study, but they were the uh, the objects of the study, but they were really the subjects of the study. That really, really incre increased their engagement in a tremendous way. So these are the students who who did the job. Uh, these are the boxes. Uh, there were like 30 of them. Uh, whenever we start a study, we, wo we always do over recruiting. So we always uh, we plan the study for 24 people, but we always take, you know, two to each group more. So we know that pe people don't basically d deliver the results. So if we want to have something that, that really comes together, we should do that. So these were the boxes, hardly fit into a car. Uh, that was actually something that we didn't, didn't perceive. Uh, that was really quite interesting. That was the box itself. And one thing that we didn't think about before preparing this was that this is not a very convenient thing to carry about. Uh, I brought it from play to my home because I want to have one uh, for classes and things like that. And that was not really convenient to carry it around in the public transportation. But we already knew that. So we also said, like, you, guys, you know, guys, sorry, we didn't think about it. And they were like, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, some things happen. Like, you, you don't really consider everything here. So it was also very huma humane of us to tell them that there were some things that we screwed up as well, and you know that that made the connection between us and them really, really closer. So this was that that was the uh, the journal. The whole story behind the um, uh, the probe was that we wanted uh, wa we wanted to take them for a trip. We wanted to take them for a journey uh, around Europe, and every single day would be a task that would relate to an invoice, but would be actually re represented by a place or a uh, a, a, a moment of transferring from, from one place to another. So basically, uh, they could really experience uh, to relate basically a, a, a particular thing about the invoice with a certain thing that was happening. So the first thing uh, was Switzerland. Uh, the idea was, okay, the Swiss are really, you know, really strict guys. They really know how to organize things. And invoices are not really that well organized. So what they got, they got two envelopes uh, for good and bad, bad, well and badly designed invoices, they, could t they got two stamps and they could stamp things saying like, oh, this is bad, this is good, this is bad, this is good. And basically by doing this whole thing, they were kind of thinking uh, about what sort of elements are necessary in the, in the invoices and which are not. And they were writing their, their discoveries here on the card. Uh, the stamps were the absolute heat of the whole thing. Uh, Basically, we gave away 30 of them, we got back three. <laughs> that was like, they said like, no freaking way we are giving this back. You know, we really want them for our kids, we want them for ourselves. So that was an extra gift that they got that we never really considered that it could actually be something that would be so, so exciting for them. So that was the first, uh, the first day. And I, uh, what I didn't say, and I think Martin didn't say either, uh, the idea was that the every single task should take no more than 30 minutes. So it shouldn't be something that really takes them a lot of time. But what we realized was that they were actually putting much more effort in that. So we, we imagined that they would put two invoices there, maybe three, we would get 10. And, you know, you can imagine how much time it takes to find 
10 invoices and to keep on stamping them. And another thing that we noti noticed, we, we did some studies with, in with invoices before just to understand how people think about invoices. And they would start like, you know, we, w removing their names and bring us the, the, the scans or the copies of the invoices. And here they gave us the, the real invoices of theirs and they didn't want them back. They said, okay, this is really for you. This is something that you can really use for your research. So we basically have this pile on invoices, you know, stamped all over at, uh, at our desks now. So the second day was something that we also thought about because we thought, okay, an invoice itself is, is a sheet of paper with some data, but there's something that happens with this invoice, right? It, it's, not, you know, it's not being paid and nothing, but it goes through a certain process. And we knew about only two things of that, of that process. We knew that there is a moment when you get an invoice, either delivered by mail or delivered by post, and there is a moment where you should pay it. And we're thinking, okay, what's going on you know, in between? So what sort of steps people take? What do they do with their invoices? Uh, where do they store them? How do they pay them? When do they pay them? You know, what, who pays them? And so on. So we, uh, we created this map. Uh, there, were, uh, th there were also stickers to it, which, which would have some indications of what, what kind of actions you could actually take on an invoice. There were some places there were some people who could do that. So, you know, not necessarily yourself, but it could be your spouse or your, your, your accountant or someone else. And there will be places where you store, store the invoices. Uh, and there will, uh, there will also be uh, some emotions or some moods that you could present. So, like, you know, you're wondering, like, is it really a process that's so <laughs> unpleasant? Is it, or maybe there is a point where people feel, okay, you know, it's a good thing. And actually there is. A very interesting thing happened. We realized that whenever people pay the invoice, so after the moment of, you know, getting rid of the money, uh, they think, okay, I've done it, and they are happy then. And this is something that could also be used, right? This, this is something that could be really exploited in a, in a design process. So that was the second day. Then the third day was, okay, we, we didn't really know how people pay those, those invoices. So is it, you know, do they go to the post? We have the data, like some statistical data saying that 30% of people pay invoices I either uh, in their banks or on, uh, in the post office. And we're wondering, like, yeah, is it really the case? Or like, do they use all the facilities that are being provided to them? And so on and so forth. So basically what was designed was a quiz uh, where you could become a member of a royal family that was traveling to Great Britain. And basically you could, uh, you fill in the quiz and then you would become one of the members of the, of the queen family and you would get a, a a pin spinning to you saying like, okay, you're a member of a royal family. Uh, actually, we had a big discussion with the students because at first, uh, when you paid by post, you would become a dog of the royal family. And I was like, I, I look at this and I said, like, yeah, this is actually a pretty neat idea, but I think that we will offend half of them. <laughs> so like, let's remove that part, that particular part. We changed that. But what was the second part? Because that was, okay, we, we understood uh, what they do, but we, we wanted also to understand why they choose this particular path. So, so they were asked to write, a, a, how do you say it in English? Oh my God. The speech to the nation uh, as a royal family member saying why you pay the invoice the way you pay and why it is good. A A4 pages filled up with text. Uh, actually, uh, Paulina and Paulina were talking about the overwhelming amount of data uh, yeah, I totally, I totally empathize with you girls <laughs> there. <laughs> I'm still having all those papers on my desk and I'm wondering like, what am I supposed to do with them? These are fantastic stories. They are, first of all, we use them just to show them to people who work on these kind of things, to show, to show them how much you can get out of the users. So they are our uh, marketing tool in a way. Uh, but also they bring so much, so much information about how people think about invoices, which is a very difficult thing to get out of them when you just ask them, okay, why do you pay your invoice in the post office? Yeah, because I have it on my way to work, right? This is some, as much as you get from them. So that was the third day. Then, the, then, then there was a fourth day, uh, which was, so okay, you get an, e, uh, an uh, invoice by, po uh, by uh, mail, but you get it always with an email, so like with some sort of text. And the text that was generated by play at the time was uh, very long, very unclear, uh, missing a lot of data, uh, and no one wanted to dare to redesign that. So we knew that we really had have to push to make people change their opinion about how badly designed that was. Uh, so 
the third thing was okay you are coming back from the from from uk to back to europe uh, uh, on a channel and then you're writing a letter in the in the bottle so they get the bottle they got a letter into in the bottle and they were supposed to tell us how this uh, uh, email should look like what sort of data should be there so they were they were creating that they had a, a an original one and they they were kind of cutting parts and then gluing them to the to the to the sheet to to explain how it should look like uh, there was an also interesting design uh, tweak with this particular uh, uh, element because uh, the paper somehow expanded. Uh, so, you know, it was quite easy to put the sheets into the bottle, but it was a little bit harder to get them out. But the people liked the bottle and they didn't want to break the bottle. So basically, it was also they didn't return to us. We got one back. Uh, and so they said, like, yeah, we didn't want to crush the bottle and they were pulling this sheet of paper out of it so basically we get them we got them back like looking like this and one was even tor torn apart it was it was but yeah but they, they 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 did the task and again we got so much data that uh, the email and it was so convincing that the email got redesigned the first redesign already happened and the second is uh, on the way so so this is already changing so it immediately influenced the way the company thought about this uh, email uh, and how to design it then there was the fourth day, uh, the fifth day, and that was the task, okay, so like, okay, we already knew what's wrong in the invoices, we knew how people treat them, we knew how the image should look like, but what are the elements that they really wanted to have on an invoice? Because we sort of, during the previous studies, we also realized that we tend, as a company, to put a lot of information on an invoice, which is not really necessarily needed there. So this is the information that from a, 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 an accounting uh, perspective or from an organizational perspective, it seems like a reasonable thing to have there, but maybe this is just our opinion, and that was really the case. Uh, so basically what we got, we said, okay, think of an of a invoice as a, as a menu in a restaurant. That was Paris, by the way. We got, uh, back to, we got to France at that point. Uh, and uh, think of the things which should be the starter, so the things that should be on the top, like in the top part of the invoice, what should be the main course? So what is the meat of the, of the invoice? And what, are, what is the dessert? So what are the things that should be added there, but if they are not there, you know, no, nothing much happens. Again, we, got, uh, we actually got statistical data out of it. It was so clear. We got really pinpointed elements that should come on an invoice and where they should be basically uh, placed. One, one example. Uh, the information about the uh, customer service was placed on the top uh, left corner of the uh, of the invoice, and people said, like, actually, when we read the invoice, we read everything. So we, we we look at the data, and then we look at the price, and then if there is a problem there, then we want to see that the telephone to the customer service, not on the top of it, at the end, because this is our way of thinking. If there's something wrong, that's the the the, the natural place, the intuitive place to look for it. And that was actually the information that we got out of it. Uh, so, so that was the day, uh, the day five. And the final sixth day was, uh, was Spain. Uh, they got on a beach, you know, drinking margarita. And suddenly they were supposed to realize that they forgot to, uh, uh, to pay an invoice. And they got three postcards and they were supposed to write to, some, to one of their friends to pay an invoice for them and how this person should do it. So basically there were like questions on those postcards. One was like, I didn't pay, pay an invoice because, uh, I, or I forgot to pay an invoice because, the consequence of it, uh, what should happen with it, and what are my emotions and what is missing on an invoice that would help me do the thing. And that was something that uh, we are still thinking what to do with it, but it was something that really deeply shocked me. Uh, so we realized there are two reasons for not paying an invoice. One is that people forget. So basically, there's like a lot of papers coming, a lot of things happening. They put it aside and they just forget about it. And, you know, then they pay later when, when they get reminded. Uh, it's me, actually. I do it like this. Uh, but there's another group of people who don't pay their invoices because they don't have financial liquidity. So basically, they don't have the money at the particular point to pay the invoice because there is, you know, you never, you don't get it at the exact same point when your salary or your, you know, client cash comes onto your account. And in both cases, uh, ev almost every single person wrote to us that they, they, they would like to have a, a small 
placed on an invoice where they could write to the company, I'm sorry I forgot to pay the money. And there was, there was something like, oh my God, you know, like they, they, they don't want to rip us off. They don't want to not to pay us. <laughs> they just, you know, they slept and they want to apologize for it. And this is so human uh, uh, and, and so beautiful in a way. So we're actually thinking how we could actually implement this kind of mechanism so, so people actually can, can say like, sorry, screwed up. Uh, so these were the, the six days. Uh, there was also the final thing that um, we asked them uh, at the end. So we asked them to write sort of a, a memoir from the, uh, from the trip. They could write some memories from what happened. And they could add some extra things that they thought about, uh, that we didn't think about during the exercises, uh, that they could uh, uh, place there, that could help us with, with, with uh, redesigning of an invoice. Again, we got a lot of data from them hundreds of insights. Uh, we managed to deal with one part of it. We managed to deal with, um, uh, with how the invoice should be constructed. We designed uh, six alternatives out of, uh, out of all those insights, and we already tested them with, uh, uh, with the users. And, and we are at the point to, to bring them together to create the final solutions, which is very what was really interesting. We, uh, the study helped us realize that uh, the individual clients need a completely different sort of invoice than business clients. Uh, and actually, individual clients, they want to have the information about the, the price, like all the, the money they have to spend, but they also want some emotional, a little cheesy, actually, I think, uh, elements there that, that create them a feeling that the company is promoting itself to them. The business clients want their data. They don't want any extra things. They just want a clean information on the on an, invo on an invoice. And this is a very interesting thing, how we are just thinking whether we should design two different things or we should design one that, that combines those two needs. Uh, so really, the rest, fortunately, the project is expanding. Uh, so uh, we uh, said, OK, we will deal with the first part of the data to, to, to de redesign the invoices. And then we will, got, uh, we will get into a process of redesigning the whole path of an invoice. And then we will deal with the rest of the data. because. I, I really I spent a lot of uh, a lot of hours uh, analyzing this, and uh, this is just the beginning. The engagement, hell yeah! Uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, we usually over recruit people because about 20% of them drop out of the study. In this case, we got out 30 boxes. Imagine you ask 30 people to fill in tasks for six days, day in, day out, about this freaking boring invoice. We got 29 people coming to the workshops, fi finalizing the project, and one person didn't come only because her child got into the, uh, into the hospital. 100% of engagement on their side. It was, that was something that we never experienced. That was something that was really shocking. And there was one lady who works at NGO, uh, and she wrote us a letter which <laughs> I think it sp sp uh, sp spans over like two A4s. Uh, and she said, when I opened this and I look at everything, she, 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 she wrote that she came home and she opened it and she opened everything. She really wanted to see it all right away. And she said, like, I almost cried because I participate in these kind of studies for years already. And no one ever thought about me as a person. And this one, this one, this first time, I felt like a person in the study, like a human in the study. It was something that, that touched me a lot. So actually, she asked me the students to thank the students. I see Przemek there, so uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, OK, uh, a bunch of theory. Uh, so cultural probe is a, is a method which has been already discussed and uh, written about in, uh, in scientific research. Um, I have this twist of research. so. Uh, yeah, th this is something that I try to get back to. And basically, uh, but in, you need it because then you can understand why these kind of methods work the way, the way, the way they work. So basically, there are things that you, know to, you want to know about people. There are some research methods that help you to do it. And that the, the, you have a certain level of knowledge that you get out of it. And on the first level, you, when, you, when you run interviews, when you run focus groups, you you, you get information that they tell you and they think they think about something. So they basically give you information that they rationalize through their brains and they you know, spit out on you when you're in a session. 
And basically, this knowledge, it can be very valuable. I'm, I'm not questioning the value of it, but it's quite explicit. This is something that they think about. So this is something that they ra rationalize and they brought up to their, to their consciousness and they, they, they give, give that to you as a researcher. On the second level, you, you, you watch what they do and how they act. So this is the observational data. This is when you go and you observe them, you spend time with them, you shadow them, you do contextual inquiry with them and things like that. And there you get observational data. So you not only see what they, f what they tell you what they do, but you also see whether this is actually something that comes together and often it doesn't. Uh, and this is already a great amount of data and this is really rich and it helps to design good things. But there is another level uh, when you start trying to get from them what they know, what they feel, and what they dream about. And this is something that brings the most brilliant ideas uh, out of people and that brings the most interesting things and those twists in the project that you can get out. And basically, uh, to, to get them, you, you, you have to use gener generative techniques, and cultural probing is one of them. Uh, there are many. Uh, context mapping is another one. And basically, you get, through, through these kind of tools, you get information from them which is really deep, which is usually unconscious, which really needs time to surface and to be provided to you as a researcher. And it cannot happen in an hour. It cannot happen in a day. It needs time, and it needs stimulation, stimulation for people to get it out and to make them think and realize the way they act and the way they think and the, the way they, they feel. And uh, I personally think that all the methods are fantastic, but these kind of methods give something which is so unique and gives you really fantastic insights which are really hard to find otherwise. So again, the students, I really want to thank them because it was their hard, hard work to, that, that, that got us to actually do the study. Uh, and they did an excellent work and uh, I'm, I'm really proud of them because, you know, I'm also teaching them, so uh, that, that, that's something that... <laughs> Uh, and actually, uh, with Martin, we, we've been discussing that, uh, so we, we were thinking of bringing all these materials to show it to you, uh, but uh, then we thought, okay, no, <laughs> we will try to create an experience for you uh, with that if you want to, and we uh, agreed that we will, we will start publishing on our blogs, so on Martin's blog, on my blog, and on Martin's blog, uh, some of the, 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 the visuals of what people brought to us and we will try to comment of what we got, got out of it so you can get a bit richer information than just seeing them for a, for a second. And that's it. Thank you very much.